Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, we're going to be talking about the Sterling handpiece machine and handpiece faceting, because many of you have seen my episodes recently, and you're seeing that I'm doing mostly cutting these days. That's because I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to be less of a schmuck. So what I want to do today is bring you in close and give you an idea of what is this machine, how does it work, and how can you learn more about it? Because maybe you, like me, also believe that if you understand this machine, it will enhance your understanding of gemstones and everything that you need to know about gemstones. So even though this apparatus looks very complex, it's got various knobs, it's got plates of sorts, it's got a spinning wheel, it's got this thing, and it's got a flashing light that goes beep boop beep boop. Very scientific. But truly, it is a simple machine. In fact, what you really need to understand is that what makes this a handpiece machine is that it has a separate handpiece. And if you don't have this, the machine is effectively useless. All right, fine, there are things that you can do with it if you don't have this handpiece, but this is really what makes everything work. This thing, not this thing. All faceting machines, even the old school ones that are still hand cranked, do basically one thing. They make this spinning lap spin. That's it. It doesn't need to be going incredibly fast, that just makes things move faster and more efficiently. In fact, there are certain times where it's actually beneficial for the machine to be going slower, both for your control and also the way it influences the cutting or polishing of the gemstone. So one thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the little light that goes beep boop beep boop, because this actually indicates, theoretically, the rotations per minute, or RPMs. So in my case, I find that it's actually easier to cut certain gemstones on certain speeds, or polish them. Cutting, you can do at almost any speed. It's a question of, you know, how much guts have you got? Because if you're not delicate and it's moving at a high speed, it cuts very fast, and sometimes you make irreparable mistakes. But when it comes to polishing, the speed is actually rather important, because I find that when I try and polish certain materials, like barrel, for example, if I polish it at too high of a speed, for whatever reason, it keeps introducing scratches back into my nice, smooth surface. And I don't like that. I should put this down before I throw it at you. Wouldn't be intentional. Probably. So the speed controller is actually one of my favorite features of this machine, and a lot of the older machines actually don't have a speed controller. They may have a gear that can double or halve the speed of the machine, but I don't want to have to open up the machine every time I want to change the speed. This one conveniently has a knob on the side. So instead of going beep boop beep boop, it goes beep boop beep boop beep boop, which is convenient for me. So aside from the speed controller, really all the other things that I control on this are the speed that the water comes out, and that doesn't really change a whole lot. And that's just to keep dust from flying up and, you know, causing long-term illnesses, which is actually a thing, so please make sure you cut with water. We don't want any mineral dusts all up in our business. It's not wholesome. Aside from that, I control the laps. So I can take off this nut and this washer. <laughs> and I can change out this lap. So this is just a diamond topper lap, and I can change this out for varying grits. I can change this out for varying different types of polishing laps. And if you want to get into all the technical details, then you should probably go over to Justin K. Prim's site, because he is much more knowledgeable on these things than me. In fact, I only know what I know because of him. I had long hours slaving at this machine. But anyhow. Aside from the laps, we also control this riser plate. So this just has a knob on top that you twist, and the plate goes up and it goes down. That's all it really does. Well, it also swivels a little bit, but that's not a necessary function most of the time. It's just for your convenience. These things are all we control with the machine. Everything else happens on the handpiece. So if we wanted to use this machine with a different handpiece from a different model, we can. If you wanted to use a stick with some sort of plastic gear on it to control what angles and indexes you were coming at the lap, you could also use that with this machine. So from my point of view, handpiece machines, whether you use this brand or another brand, are incredibly versatile tools. And that's why I was interested in learning on this type of machine, as opposed to some of the others that look like they're space age robots with some sort of chop and arm. It's called a mask machine, Peter. Shh. So to the hand piece itself, this actually looks incredibly technical, and it is, but what we need to keep in mind is that the earliest days of faceting history, they were just using a stick and sticking that into another piece of wood, and that was helping them to control the angles that they were approaching the spinning lap. It didn't have this delightful gear on front which controls the index. And basically that is, from a given angle, the twist that is on the stick. And instead of using an actual stick, now we use a metal pin that sits in here, and that's called a dop. 
That's what this machine does. It controls the index and it also controls the angle. Do we have to do those things? No, it just gives us another level of precision. Even now in Thailand and in the UK and a number of other places, people still cut just using a stick. It can be done, it just takes a lot longer to learn. Intuition doesn't come overnight. Well, I guess for some people it does. Not me. So really, this device right here is just a tool to increase precision. It is not something that you have to have in order to cut gemstones. I, however, lack precision in many things in my life, and so I try and introduce things that can help me along the way. Sometimes it's knowledge, sometimes it's tools. But either way, if you want to keep learning about the Sri Lankan handpiece machine, you should check out Justin's channel, or you should continue watching mine as I make more videos showing you what I can do with this thing. Otherwise, you should be hitting that like button, that subscribe button, and telling all of your friends about me. And until next time, bye-bye.